copy of a Greek work of the second century before Christ. During the Hellenistic period, artists became concerned with the accurate representation of childhood, old age, and even physical deformity. The range of subject matter was extended to include genre-like figures from the fringes of society. Fine, large-scale statues of fishermen, peasants, and aged courtesans became valued religious dedications, sometimes placed in a park-like setting within the sanctuary of the god. Although this statue is known familiarly as the Old Market Woman, it probably represents an aged courtesan on her way to a festival of Dionysos, the god of wine. Her delicate sandals and the ample material in her thin, elaborately draped chitin are a far cry from the rough garb of a peasant woman. The ivy wreath on her head marks her association with Dionysos and the basket of fruit, and the two chickens must be dedicatory gifts to the god, or simply her own provisions for a long day of celebration. Veneration of Dionysos was widespread. During the Hellenistic period, and ancient literary descriptions give an idea of the extraordinary processions and festivals held in his honor. The flattened composition of the figure is typical of sculpture created in the late second century before Christ. The original work may have been dedicated in a sanctuary of Dionysos. The Roman copy could have decorated a garden. The subject of this statue has not been identified with certainty. The warrior held a shield on his left arm and probably a spear in his right hand, and he stands with his feet carefully placed on a sloping surface. The figure must have some association with the sea because a plank-like form surrounded by waves is carved on the plinth of a second copy in the British Museum, London. It has been suggested that he is the Greek hero Protzilaus who ignored an oracle's warning that the first Greek to step on Trojan soil would be the first to die in battle. This statue might represent him descending from the ship ready to meet his fate. Following the discovery of a wound carved in the right armpit, the figure was reinterpreted as a dying warrior falling backward and identified as a famous statue by the sculptor Chrysillus. Many other identifications have been suggested to explain the unusual stance and the unique iconography of this statue and of the copy in London, but none has been generally accepted. This exceptionally lavish monument, which stands over 13 feet high, must have been erected by one of the wealthiest aristocratic families. Some scholars have restored the name of the youth in the inscription as Megacles, a name associated with the powerful clan of the Alcmionidae, who opposed the tyrant Pesistratos during most of the second half of the 6th century before Christ. The tombs of aristocratic families were sometimes desecrated and destroyed as a result of that conflict, and this steel may well have been among them. This grave marker commemorated a soldier who was shown facing right, holding a spear. His lower legs, protected by greaves, shin guards, are preserved. The scene in the panel below shows a warrior mounting a quadriga, four-horse chariot, while his charioteer holds the reins. Such vehicles were used by the Mycenaean Greeks of the second millennium before Christ and are described by Homer in the Iliad and the Odyssey. By the Archaic period, quadrigas were no longer used in daily life. They were driven in competition, however, for the most prestigious events at Greek games were chariot races. This scene may have been intended to recall a victory of the deceased in the Apobates race in which an armed runner jumped on and off a chariot, or it may evoke the family's aristocratic lineage by depicting a legendary hero departing for the Trojan War. The panel is carved in extremely low relief. The many planes were originally differentiated with red and black paint. The greaves and spear of the large-scale figure were painted blue. The background was red. Traces of red, blue, black, and green remain on the interlaced curved lines that decorate the border of the shaft.
because the framing niche that once surrounded this relief is missing, there are no inscriptions that might identify the deceased. Both the seated man and the veiled woman behind him stare straight ahead, as if the young woman who gazes down at them were invisible. Do they mourn their dead daughter? Does she mourn her dead father, or is she the sole survivor of the group? Despite its ambiguity and solemn sadness, the relief conveys an intense, though restrained, sense of family unity. Carved by a master, this grave steel is one of the most magnificent examples that have survived from the classical period.